Hello guys, you are welcome to Network Tips. So in today's class, we'll be discussing about spanity and how it helps to resolve group in our network. So it used to be that uh, all we wanted to is just to stay connected on, our net on the network and be being able to communicate with one another. So for instance, we have this PC over here. Let me say this guy is PC A and we have another PC over here. Let me say this guy is PC B for instance. And they no, all these two PCs needed is just to communicate and share information among each other, and that's all. That's all they needed. Understand? But um, as time goes on, these requirements start increasing. We need to stay more connected with one another. Understand? Because looking at this network, this is just a very simple network. Understand? But it's not that perfect. Yeah, it's not that perfect. Because for example, what if this link connecting to these two switches goes bad? Maybe for an instance, rat it this link, you understand? And they you know, we have we have lost connectivity between these two these two devices now. You understand? So how are we going to uh, uh, how are we going to solve this, prevent this from happening? We start connecting our switches with multiple links. That's what it is. You understand? So uh, when we start connecting our once we connect our switch with more than one link, you can even go as far as connecting it with maybe two, three, four, up to eight, or whatever. Understand? Because that is all about redundancy. Because we, as a human being, everything that everything about us comes with pair. We have two pairs of hand, eyes, and you know, ear, and all those kind of stuff. So, and they need to connect our switch. Start connecting our switch with more than one link. Understand? We have redundancy quite all right. Yes, but we will create what they called. A loop on our network. We have introduced loop on our network. Now, what is this loop and how we and how we occur? So let me take for example this PCA wants to communicate to this PCB. You understand? He's sending out maybe a ping message. So you send out a ping message. It's going to send first of all send out what they call an app message to resolve the unknown MAC address of this PCB. Once this message is sent to this switch. This switch is going to receive this message because this app message is a broadcast message. This message, this switch is going to send it out from his port, all of his port, apart from this port that he received from. So it's going to send it out from this port. It's going to send it out from this port. So this switch here over here is going to receive receive this message coming from this link. It's going to send it out from his whole port as well. Apart from this port that he received it from, it's going to send it out from here as well. Understand? Now remember that this switch sent out a message before coming. There is a message coming from this switch from this link. So it's going to receive that message as well. It's going to send out from this port, apart from this port. Understand? Now remember this guy also replied with that other app. There is a message coming from this guy to this guy. Understand? It's going to receive that message and also. So you see, I swear this thing is going. This is keep on going, going, going on to how what they call a loop on our network. You understand? So this loop. Uh, is going to uh, keep on this packet is, is going to keep on increasing increasing until it will occupy our bandwidth the bandwidth on our network understand and it's going to also impact on the CPU utilization of these of these switches because they will keep on uh, receiving more packets and looking at how to uh, 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 resolve this 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 can cause a, a a, what they call a denial of service, a DOS attack on our network. So, so um, that's what spanning tree. Uh, that's what loop is all about. And how are we going to solve this loop now? That's where spanning tree comes to our rescue. So spanning tree is going to help us to uh, uh, resolve loop on our switch network by blocking more, more, or by blocking one or more ports on our network. Yeah, depending on. On how many ports that he he found uh, he uh, he found as a potential port that can cause a loop on our network, that's the, that will determine how many ports is going to block on our network. So let's see how spanning tree uh, actually uh, resolve this loop and how how many how it does it uh, know which port to block. So so on our network here we have this this topology that is. That has redundancy of course you can see these these three switches are interconnected to each other so we have redundancy so even if 
this link page for example you can still communicate to this other one via this way you understand so that's how it is so and each switch is going to have what they call a priority and also a mac address on there so you can see uh, the aaa mac address for switch a bbb mac address for switch b and this is mac address for switch b you understand so switches on this panning tree protocol is going to be exchanging a special a special message called a ppdu message understand this message uh, we stand we stand for bridge protocol the time it's a broadcast message that will be that will be forwarded to all switches on this panning tree protocol they will be broadcasting these messages so all it's only the switch that's only switches that understand panning tree language is going to respond to that to those messages so this message is going to look like this you understand it's going to look like this but the important part of this message is this one this bridge id that's what we're interested in you understand this bridge id is going to contain a priority and a mac address and also extended a uh, system id but it's only this bridge uh, bridge priority and mac address that we are also interested in inside this bridge id you understand so switches when you spanning tree protocol is going to use this is going to use this uh this bridge id to alert what they called a root bridge you understand on our network you understand? so is is the bridge how do they alert this root bridge is the switch with the lowest bridge id that we win the election you understand so the switch with the lowest bridge id by default you know i told you that that bridge id is going to contain priority and also mac address so you can see them the priority of these switches by default is going to be different, be the same but the tiebreaker between this switch now is going to be the mac address the mac address so the switch aaa has the lowest mac address among these three switches because a comes first before b and c and not just gonna so just like the way you're counting one two three one comes first before two and so on so all every other switches now will become what they called a non-root bridge you understand a non-root bridge and the the the, the root bridge is going to uh, put all his ports on what they call a in four designated ports a four designated ports in spanning tree is known as ports that force traffic so the root bridge is not going to block any of these ports rather it's going to put it on what they call a, for, a designated forwarding forwarding state uh, some use for forwarding traffic in spanning tree topology so every other switch now uh, will now become a non-root bridge understand and they will now let they will now find the shortest path the shortest path to get to this root bridge that's another thing they are going to do understand so you can see this is just a simple uh, topology that i just uh, i didn't uh, try to make it complicated by uh, because in the real life you might have a uh, switch some switches might have the traffic port some switch might have fast ethernet or somehow ethernet port or something like that so of course spanning tree knows that the traffic ethernet port is much faster than Fast Ethernet port, but for this example, I just use Fast Ethernet port throughout. So you can see every other root bridge now, every other node, all the non root bridges is going to find this the shortest path to get to the root bridge. You understand? So for this, in this case now, the shortest path to this root bridge is this port. You understand? To get to this root bridge. You understand? So they are going to make this port a root bridge to this on this network. Their root port to get to this root bridge now what is remaining is these two between these two the link between these two guys you understand because root can happen because this root port can still for traffic and this ignited port also force traffic as well you understand? so they are, so these two ports the, the link between these two guys are still free so they will not look at each other and be like oh oh oh, oh it's not remaining two or four so uh how are we going to uh well which which one are among us is going to block our port to 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 stop Luke from uh, from occurring on this on this network? So they are going to do that by letting uh, by looking at by using their, their 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 bridge ID as well. So the switch with the lowest bridge ID is going to be the one to 
uh, put this port on designated forwarding why the one with the highest bit id is going to drop this port as well so you can see by priority by default the priority is going to be the same for the tiebreaker is a mac address you understand so look at it here this guy is going to put his port on port designated why this guy is going to uh, drop his port you understand? so you might be thinking about uh about about this port how does this route this non root bridges determine the shortest path to get to this root bridge. They determine the shortest path to get to this root bridge uses what they call cost. Understand? So cost cost is based on the interface of that switch. You know, some switches has Ethernet interfaces, some has what they call fast Ethernet interfaces, and so have what they call gigabit Ethernet. Uh, interfaces you can even go on and on uh, uh, sound so so like you know that fast ethernet interfaces is much can transmit data faster than normal ethernet ethernet interfaces you have ethernet you have fast ethernet you have gigabit ethernet you understand so this guy fast ethernet can transmit data faster than ethernet interfaces why gigabit ethernet can transist data more than fast Ethernet interfaces. You understand? So that's how it is on our network. So a, an Ethernet interface is going to have which the speed is 10 Mbps, 10 Megabps, uh, so 10 Megabps. Yes. It's going to have a cost of uh, 100. Why uh, 100 Megabits interface, which is fast Ethernet, is going to have 19 cost. It's going to have a 19 cost part. Why a gigabit Ethernet which is which is uh, 1000 bits you know what I'm is going to have a cost part of 4. You know what I'm so look at this topology. Uh, let's assume that this switch A is already the root bridge and the every other switches here are no root bridge. So the next thing now is to elect the root port to get to this root bridge, right? So let me take for an instance this switch now. This switch C wants to okay let's start from this switch b for an example so this switch b wants to get to want to elect the root port to get to this root bridge you understand it's going to have options to take this part or this part right so it's going to do uh, if i take this part now it's going to cost me 19. You understand? taking this part you can see it's going to cost him 19 already it's going to 19 plus 4 you understand? it's going to even uh, impact more Understand? So he's going to, of course, make this port his designated port. No, sorry, his root port. His root port. Understand? He's going to make this port his root port. So looking at switch C, switch C now have this option to take this part, right? I also have option to take this part and also this part to get to this root bridge. So taking this part is going to cost him uh, hundred. But taking this part is going to cost him 19, 19, uh, son, and also 19 here. Here, look at this part, it's going to cost him 100 here as well. So, he, automatically, this part is going to be the root port for him. Uh, son. So, um, looking at the switch D to elect his root port. He has option to either take this part, this part, or this part, uh, son, to get to this root bridge. So if he's taking this part, it's going to cost him 19 here, already here, now you already have 200 here. Of course, this part is no go area. This part is also a no go area because this is a slow link here. So he's going to take this part as, going to make this part, this part, his root part, to get to this root bridge. So looking at this guy as well. This guy is going to have 200, 200 here. He's going to also have a fast link towards this part if you take this link. So it's going to make this guy his root port as well. Understand? So let's look at the final result. Understand? So look at it. So here, root port, root port, root port, and root port. Understand? So that's how uh, switches can elect the root port um, to his switches. So Spanning tree can even get more complicated when we start having VLANs on our network. So, uh, like you can see on this topology, uh, we have switch A, we have switch A and switch B, which which are member of VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. While switch C is only a member of 
VLAN, uh, VLAN 20, you understand? On switch A, for example, uh, if I'm to draw this diagram, there is no loop on this network, you understand? So this B and this A, you understand? They are just connected to each other, just like I told you, you understand? But on VLAN 20 now, we now have C introduced on this network, which is now connected like this now. And we have a loop on this network. So if you leave this topology like this, you understand? This switch A might be this switch A might be the root bridge for for uh, might be the root bridge for uh, VLAN 10. You understand? And VLAN and VLAN 20 for an instance. You understand? So I know that on our network, on the spanning tree network, all switches will allow what they call a root port to get to the root bridge. Understand? So, so which means what this means that every if I want to send traffic on our network, traffic is going to first of all pass through this root bridge A before going to the destination where that traffic is going is coming to go. Let me take for instance there is a PC stated here, there is a PC stated here. Understand? To communicate to this switch now. If I want to communicate to this PC, I have to send it to this guy first before coming here. You understand? You understand? Instead of going through here, I'm going to send to the other side. It's going to go like this. So, uh, there is a need for us to load balance, you understand, on our network, not to overwhelm this only this switch on our network. So, that's where we can now making, we can start making different switches, the root bridge. On some VLANs, some separate VLANs. So let me take, for example, on this on this topology now. I can make this switch C, the VLAN, uh, the root bridge for for uh, the root bridge for VLAN VLAN 20 to load balance on network. So when devices on 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 VLAN 20 want to communicate to each other, this guy will be the root bridge. So first of all, send traffic for here before sending to this guy as well. So, uh, if you have been playing uh, with packet tracer a lot, you know that you notice that each time you plug in your network uh, to the switch, for example, if you plug in your network to the switch, now you notice the light usually go to maybe red, yellow, you understand? You understand? Red, yellow before it now turns green, if you remember. So, if you have been uh, doing the lab that we have been uh, we following up. So what 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 this is all about is the spanning tree state. So spanning tree is trying to uh, pass through uh, the the, the the spanning tree interface is trying to pass through some state before it will determine which state will that port be on. You understand? So it's going to determine those stages are uh, blocking stage, listening stage, turning stage, and the and forwarding state. So devices that are blocked interfaces that are blocked does not uh, on this sorry on this blocking state it's not going to be forwarding any frame on this state and it's not going to be learning any state on this state and it's going to spend uh, approximately 20 seconds on this state understand so spots that are on blocking state it's not going to move forward to this listening state understand? so if the if this spot between this switch and now block now, okay? it's not going to move forward to this listening state. It's only port that are maybe root port or designated port are going to move down to this uh, listening state. And as well, on this listening state, it's not going to be sending out traffic, it's not going to be sending out in our frames, and it's not going to be learning MAC addresses as well. It's going to spend like 15 minutes as well. Then on this learning state, understand, it's going to learn, uh, it's not going to be sending out packets, but it's going to be learning. Uh, 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 MAC addresses. So that's that's the period that is going to use to learn all the MAC addresses on on the network. You understand? Remember, like, like I told you, it's going to once you plug your device, it's going to start learning MAC addresses on your network. So it's on this stage that he's going to start learning those MAC addresses and start writing it on his MAC table, MAC address table. You understand? It's going to spend approximately five seconds. What's a great name to describe this state? Learning state. <laughs> so, on the for this state is going to start sending our packet and is going to as well as learning 
learning those map addresses as well and write writing it on the on his map the map address table. Uh, so, so and that's the final stage on the spanning tree protocol. So uh, for here we are going to stop uh, for for now and in the next lecture we are going to look at how spanning tree uh, uh, look at the spanning tree lab and how it's and how it works and how we can uh, uh, change our change this, uh, the root bridge on our network you know, so to enable uh, to enable um, uh, balancing on our network and also how we can even speed up this uh, this this spanning tree uh, port state because you can see this is going to spend approximately 15 50 seconds you know, so when you plug this PC on network you're going to make approximately like 50 seconds before you start uh, gaining access to the network so it's a lot so uh yeah so that's all for this uh, uh for this class i would like to thank you for watching and see you in the next video